In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Sing to the Lord a new song. Maybe the next song will be new to you, but I hope you will not mind and you will join in rejoicing and praising the Lord. Come, people of the risen King.
Dear friends, sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, I greet you again after another week of lockdown and the virus threat. Let us hope we are getting closer to the end of both. But until it comes, we still need to keep safety precautions and meet only on the wide world web. Thank you for joining in this worship with the Lockerbie Drivesdale Hutton and Corey Church of Scotland. We believe the Lord is with us even if we are alone, which means we are never alone. Let us thank God for his closeness and for his love for us. And first of all, I want to thank my helpers. This time it's Rosie with a prayer, Arun with the readings, Shimon with the far away drums and Katka with piano. And of course, music would be hardly good without great singing of my wife Lydia, who after tiring work in care home still is willing to learn new songs, sing and record. We also discovered a hidden treasure in Roddy, whose photographs accompany today's worship. Thank you, Roddy. And thank God for the glorious spring and the blossoming nature around, which helps us to survive the lockdown mentally sound. I'm also very grateful for all your reactions, for the videos and the sermons. It's wonderful to see how people from all over the world are inspired by the same word of God. So please, if you are inspired, don't hesitate. Write an email or a letter. I can't promise I will manage to answer everything, but, but I'm trying. And I again have a challenge for you today. Quite a difficult one this time. In one of the recorded songs, you will hear morning bird twittering under our window. The question is, can you recognize some of the birds by their singing? I can't, I tell you, but maybe you are better than me and you will help me to, to recognize them. And if you want to take part in the service next week, do the reading or, or prayer, just let me know. It's not so difficult to record with a mobile phone or perhaps just write it down for me to read it. Don't be shy. And please don't forget the needs of those who are in danger or in big troubles. Try to find ways how to support them or the charities who take care about them. And please don't forget the church is also completely dependent on gifts and support of its members and well-wishers. If you want to find out how you could support the Drivesdale Church and the things we do, please visit our webpage and contact our treasurer, Kate. Now, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we can't come to your temple because of dangerous virus, but you are coming to us. The door might be closed, but it will not stop you from visiting us with your love and your righteousness. Although we are not as we should be, in spite of the fact we are sinners, you come to us. Thank you for, for that. We pray now for forgiveness of our sins. And we are so happy to hear you really forgive. Thank you for it. So we put away all our fears and anxieties. We put away all our selfishness and indifference. We put away all hatred or enmities. 
We lay them, lay them down under your cross on which you died for us. Lord, we want to get rid of everything with what hinders us from, from proper hearing your word today. Help us to understand what you want to tell us and help us to live according to your word and your will. Make us your people. And bless all the Christians who worship today anywhere in the world. Lead us all to unity of your love. And we pray as God's children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us listen to the first reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 17 to 33. First reading taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 17 to 33. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the things which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is, Come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Preadventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous, with the wicked, and that the righteous shall be as the wicked, that be far from thee, shall not judge of all the earth, do right. And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Preadventure shall there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto them, unto him yet again, and said, Preadventure, there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty sake. And he said unto him, O, oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Preadventure, there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it. If I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, preadventure, 
there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20 sake. And he said, Ho, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet, but this once, preadventure, ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. And the second reading from the epistle to Romans, chapter 5, verses 6 to 21. Second reading is taken from Romans, chapter 5, verses 6 to 21. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offence, so also is the free gift. For if through the offence of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded upon many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offences unto justification. For if by one man's offence death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offence of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offence might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. I will sing the hymn, O Worship the King, number 127 in the Church Hymnary.
Is the coronavirus God's punishment for the ungodly world? Is it penalty for our sinfulness, for our inability to resist temptations? Is it retribution for all terrible things the humankind has done and still is doing to one another and to other God's creatures? I got this question from someone, and maybe you have heard similar to, or perhaps yourself have been thinking this way. Well, sometimes, sometimes it, it gets a bit conceited form. They did something wrong and they got what they deserved whoever might be meant by this they, communists or capitalists, uh, Chinese or Italians, criminals or whoever. Let me reject this immediately. I strongly believe our task is not to brood over other sins, but to confess our own guilt repent for ourselves and pray for others. Pride and despising others is one of the worst sins, according to Jesus and the Gospels. But the question might come also as a concern, a real concern of a troubled mind. And in this case, of course, it must be taken seriously. I will confess my faith straightforward from the beginning. I don't believe it is God's punishment. Yes, I believe we all are sinners, we deserve punishment and we should repent. Yes, I know there is a lot of wrong around us and in the whole world. There are things happening which call to heaven for a penalty, similarly, like, like it was in Sodom. I also know some of our deeds can have consequences far beyond our horizons. And maybe some things we, we do here and now, and they harm people in completely different part of the world, or will hit generations of our grandchildren or even their grandchildren. Some of the things we do in our ignorance and pride carry punishment in itself. But still I believe this illness is not God's punishment. I believe in God who is, who is keener to forgive than to condemn. I believe in God who loves his whole creation and every part of it. I believe in God who sent send his own son to preach and teach forgiveness and to die as a sacrifice for reconciliation and redemption. Maybe we can look at our today's text if we can find some evidence of such God in the Bible. Abraham was a man of great faith. He did obey God's call and he left his homeland to move to the land which God promised him. He waited patiently for decades for fulfilling God's word. He wasn't really blameless. Just read his stories in the book of Genesis. He was a normal man, like any of us. However, his haggling with God over the Sodom's case belongs to his bravest deeds. He knew very well the people in Sodom are not really good. He had his own experiences with them 
and he surely heard things from his nephew Lot. Their sins were crying to heaven, and even the Lord didn't want to believe his ears and was on the way to check it. Abraham could say, Wow, finally justice, because they deserve it. And he could sit on a hilltop like Jonah the prophet at Nineveh and uh, he could wait and watch with satisfaction how God is putting things in order with the sinful cities. He could do that, but he didn't. He decided to stand before God, trembling before his holiness, feeling completely unworthy, scared what could the Lord do to him for his insolence. However, he stood his ground, praying for sinners. He was really brave trying to change God's decree, trying to change God's decision and calling upon the Lord's own justice. Lord, are you just or unjust? Should people suffer because of others' guilt? Yes, I know the majority of the city population is wicked, but what if there are 50 righteous. Well, 50 was probably just a small portion of the population of the city. We could think what could such a small number of people change. But we see it doesn't matter how large the minority is. God's justice doesn't allow other people to be punished for my sins. And just opposite, if there was a small portion of righteous people, they could have saved all the people of the city. So Abraham haggles with God. Several times he brings the same objection. Okay, you save the city for 50 people, but what if just five will be missing? God says, I will spare them for 45. And what if, 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 if there will be five missing to 45? Well, Abraham dares to go down to 10 and God is willing to accept that offer. We see merciful God in action. Yes, he would forgive the whole city if he could find 10 righteous people. Well, what if the Lord is searching our world and society for 10 righteous people? What if he is asking, is there anyone who would keep his law and the common sense and do good in the world? What can we offer him? I don't know. I'm not sure if we would do better than Sodom. But who would stand before God and intercede for the world? And who will intercede for us? Who would risk his life for this bunch of hopeless sinners? Well, as Christians, we know there is someone. God himself, the only one righteous, uh, only one righteous enough to give punishments. God himself brought the solution. He didn't wait for a new Abraham. He sent his own son to stand for humankind. A 
Apostle Paul in the Epistle of, uh, to, to Romans asks, who would be willing to risk life for someone who is not worthy of it? Giving life for someone is a deed of extreme value. We human beings have nothing bigger to, to give. We just uh, commemorated the end of the Second World War, as you all know very well. And this is always time when we remember those who gave their lives for our freedom, safety, for peace, giving life as something great. And we don't have anything bigger to give. Jesus himself told his disciples that nobody has greater love than the one who gives his life for his friends. And Jesus offered his life, life of the righteous one, as a ransom for sinners, for each and every one of us. Even if our world was like Sodom, who knows whether it's not maybe even worse. Even if our world was like Sodom and God was vainly looking for ten righteous, we still have hope because Jesus sacrificed his life for our salvation. For his love proved uh, approved by the sacrifice, God forgave us our sins. Hallelujah. This doesn't mean we can do everything we desire. This doesn't mean we can disrespect the law and hurt our neighbors without retribution. But if we believe that God forgave our sins, we can't be the same as before. If we truly love Jesus, we don't want to disappoint him. That's why we repent, we confess our sins, and we want to get rid of them, we want to live in accord with what is right and what is good. Because we know the forgiveness is given us free, but it was paid by most valuable currency, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the reason why I believe this corona plague is not God's punishment, because God loves us and is keener to forgive than to punish and condemn. He is our friend, standing on our side, covering us with his hand against storms of life. Yes, this virus is deadly. And it even might be a consequence of some human sinful activity, who knows? The danger is high, but the strongest one is on our side in the fight. He is with us when we are locked alone. He is with us when we struggle against the infection. He is with us when we are ill. He is with us when we recover. He is with us even if we are dying. We are not alone in it. That's why we can pray for healing. That's why it is perfectly right to fight the plague. That's why the efforts of all medical and caring stuff and all others is blessed, not condemned. God is on our side. Jesus is our friend interceding for us like Abraham before the Sodom's gate. Let us thank him for it. In a hymn, Jesus, friend of sinners, you can find it in Mission Praise hymn book number 1000, 
117. And I hope you will not mind the rock music code which suits this song extremely well. Let's pray the prayer of intercession. 
Let's pray. Psalm 46, verse 7 and 10 and 11. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Lord, in this season, we have slowed down. We have spent time at home. We have heard the birds sing, not masked by the sound of vehicles. You say, be still and know that I am God. For this time we know you, our Lord God Almighty. We pray that you give us your heart, your mind, to know your will. We pray for those in authority, for government, for advisors, those who have important decisions to make on a daily basis. Give them wisdom, compassion, and courage. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We pray for all those who are under pressure at work due to COVID-19 and lockdown. Those caring for others, those providing essential services. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We pray for those with concerns for themselves and their families due to poor health or worries about employment and money. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We pray for those who are ill, for those suffering from COVID-19 and others who have treatment delays. We lift to, the, lift to you those who are suffering bereavement and loneliness while cut off from families. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We pray for our children in our families in, and in our community for harmony in families and mutual support. May tears turn to laughter and disappointment turn to opportunity. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Give us grace day to day to face all that we encounter, to love you and our neighbors, to give you the glory and honor now and forever. Amen. And let us go on with God's blessing. May God, the source of all perseverance and all encouragement, grant that you may agree with one another after the manner of Christ Jesus, and so with one mind and one voice may praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. Amen. And let us finish with the last hymn, let us sing to the Lord of all hopeful, hopefulness, number 166 in church hymnary. God bless you.